Hello everyone and welcome to an Unreal Engine 4 tutorial on creating a simple yet responsive health bar system. Let's jump on in. The first step in our plan is to create the actual UI to represent our health bar. We're going to develop this in such a way that it can be easily added to the HUD of any particular project. Let's start by right clicking in the content browser, navigating to the user interface and selecting widget. Let's name this WG underscore health bar and then open it. We'll start off in the designer section of our widget where we'll build a visual representation of our health bar system. Let's start with a core item of our UI, the bar itself. Before we add it, we need to delete the present container for our visual elements. In the hierarchy panel on the bottom left, select the canvas panel and delete it. Now, in the widgets panel on the top left, we'll find all possible elements available to us to build a UI, including a percent bar. In the search box, look up progress bar, left click, and drag this into our viewport. You'll notice it will look a bit funny, but this is expected since we deleted the container that held it. Before we start adding anything else, let's add this to a HUD-like widget so that we can see it in action. Navigate back to the content browser, right click, user interface, and select widget. Name this WG HUD, and open it. Here, we won't touch that canvas panel element as it will organize and contain all elements that we wish to display to the user. What we want to do is add our health bar widget we built to this widget so that we can work on the health bar entirely separately from this potentially very large and very complex HUD widget. To do this, in the widgets panel, scroll to the very bottom to see the user created widgets. In here, you'll find our health bar widget. Left click and drag it into the viewport. From here, let's take a moment to resize our health bar widget and position it in a place that suits it. For now, that'll just be the top left. With it in place, don't forget to rename it to something proper like health bar. We now need to fasten it so that if the user decides to play with the screen size, our health bar will adapt. To do this, we can use anchors. If you are unfamiliar with anchors, you can imagine them as us designating a percentage of the screen that is owned by a particular widget. What happens is that when we scale the screen, the widget will resize itself to retain that same percentage regardless of how the screen is stretched. This means the widget will always take up the exact, expected space you designated. It's a powerful tool and is the first step in responsive interface design. Let's start by selecting our health bar widget and in the details panel looking at the anchors section at the top. In the drop down, we can see a bunch of template options for anchoring. These are all fantastic and can be used for various things, but for our usage, we'll manually anchor ours. In the drop down here, you'll find a bunch of input boxes. These are how we can actually manually set the min and max of both the X and Y axes for our anchors. Take some time to play with these so that your anchors will perfectly encompass your widget. Once done, you may notice the widget is still not aligned with your anchors. This is okay. You'll find that when you add the anchors, it'll never actually align automatically. And that is because the widget is initially offset. In the four offset boxes below the anchor section, make sure these are all zero. Once they are, you should see your widget fit dead on. With that, our widget is scaled, sized, and fit perfectly to our HUD. Now, let's get to the real fun stuff. Let's jump back into our health bar widget itself. What we want to do is expose how the health bar updates to reflect the amount the bar is filled. Normally, we can control this by selecting the health bar widget and in the details panel, changing the percent field. But this means whenever we wish to update the percent value, it's a manual update on our part. We can actually completely lead this to the health bar by utilizing bindings. Bindings expose to us something the engine does under the hood. Behind the scenes, the engine constantly updates the visual display of a widget based on values like percent. Normally this process is hidden, but we can gain access to it by using bindings. For example, to the right of the percent field, you'll see a dropdown for bind. Select this and choose new binding. You'll notice it will take you directly to a new function with an input for a float. This is the internal function that is ran by the engine to update the widget, and we've just hijacked it. What's even more great is whatever is plugged into that input pin will be what is displayed to the user in terms of how the bar is filled. So all we need to do is acquire a health variable from the player and plug it into this. And any time the health variable changes, the UI will immediately update without you ever having to tell it to. Awesome, right? Let's set this up. First things first, we need access to a health variable held by the player. We want to make this as inexpensive as possible so we don't make this process be more taxing on the computer than it needs to be. Let's create a new variable that will hold a reference to the player. Name it player ref and make it of the type first person character. Now, if you chose a different template project or your character is of a different class, feel free to choose them instead. 
Once done, let's make it public. Before we can continue, we need to give the player a variable for health. Let's quickly jump over to our character blueprint. In this case, it is my first person character blueprint. Open it up, and in the variables panel on the left, add a variable called health of the type float. Also, don't forget to make it public as well. We will also need two more variables for something we will be doing later. Let's add two more float variables, the first one being named min health, and the second max health. Both need to be public. These will give us the range of the health for user, which allows us to encompass something like a humble 0 to 25, or a whopping 0 to a million. With that done, let's jump back to our health bar widget, drag in a get reference to our player ref variable, and from it, look up the health variable. Also, let's grab references to our min and max health variables as well. There's one final step before we can hook all this up and test our system. Our progress bar only accepts a value between 0 and 1, which means most typical health values won't work. What we can do, however, is what's called normalize the health value. This means convert a particular value to a percentage of a given range. Now, for example, if you had a range of 0 to 100 and you had a value of 67, that normalized would be 0.67. To normalize a value, right click and look up normalize to range. Connect our health variable to the value pin, our min health variable to the range min pin, and our max health variable to the range max pin. Now whatever our health ends up becoming, as long as it is within this range, it'll be converted to a percent properly. With that done, connect the return value pin to the function pin. To clean up our work, make sure to rename this function to something appropriate like health bar binding. Before we can test the system, we need to make sure to have the HUD be created during the beginning of the game. Let's jump back into our character blueprint and navigate to the begin play event node. Since for mine there is already code here, I'm just going to add this to the beginning. Right click and look up create widget. In the class field, make sure to select the HUD widget we created earlier. From the output pin, look up add to viewport. This will make sure to render this widget to the screen. The last thing we need to do is provide the health bar widget with a reference to the player script itself so that it can acquire the health variables. Remember how we made the player ref variable public? From the output pin of the create node, look up the name of our health bar widget we added to the HUD. From that, look up set player ref. From the player ref input pin, look up self. This will give it this class as a reference. With that out of the way, let's get to testing. Going to our viewport, let's select our character and tweak our health variable. I'm going to set my range to 0 to 100, and my current health to 54. Let's hit play, and you'll notice the health bar immediately jump to 54% of the bar. Now you'll never need to actually tell the UI to update manually as long as you edit the health variable according to your gameplay. Alongside this, because we build a system in relative isolation in its own widget, it's very easy to bring this system to other projects and add it to a pre-existing HUD. Try going further than this and look at the other bindings available to you. There's plenty to choose from. And that's it. Thank you once again for joining me. If you liked this video or found it useful, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Most importantly though, leave your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below as I'd love to hear them. I'll see you all in the next one.